Good morning. Thank you all for coming together. I am Martha Morehouse. I am going to give you all of my affiliations. I'm the Division Director for Children and Youth Policy in the Office of Human Services Policy in the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. <laughs> there you go. So uh, <laughs> an accomplishment right there. So I'm very pleased to welcoming, uh, welcome you today to our meeting on evidence-based policies and programs. I think, sometimes think this is an a ongoing, running conversation, both in our federal conversations. We actually have staff who've um, spontaneously found themselves meeting across initiatives to talk about work around evidence-based policy issues and more people want to join. And we've had a lot of excitement about this meeting. It's been a gleam in our eye for a long time. And we uh, very much appreciate all the work and travel that's gone on in uh, convening here today. And I'm very pleased to be able to open the meeting with our Assistant Secretary, Sherry Gleed, here. Sherry was sworn in as our Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in July of 2010. She came to us from her work at the Columbia University's Mailman School of Public Health, where she'd been chair and professor in the Department of Health Policy and Management. She's had distinguished service as a senior economist for healthcare and labor market policy on the President's Council of Economic Advisors under Presidents Bush and Clinton, and has participated in several phases of health uh, care reform work. Uh, her principal areas of research are in health policy reform and in mental health care, and I'm very pleased to introduce her to you today. Thank you, Martha. Um, I am really delighted on behalf of the Office of the Assistant Secretary to welcome all of you here today. Um, I really appreciate your coming together to discuss these extremely important issues. And I think one of the things that's really been striking to me, um, looking at the scope of all the things we do across Health and Human Services, is that as an administration that's really committed to doing evidence-based policy, um, the challenges of implementing and replicating evidence-based programs are actually uh, 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 they, they, they occur in every dimension of what we do, from health policy, mental health policy, child policy, welfare policy, and so on. So it's really very, very exciting and important for us to learn from all of the experts in the room about how we can do this bad, better. Um, and I'm really excited to learn about the challenges all of you have encountered in replicating prog pro programs around children and youth. So I'm going to leave Martha with the session because she actually knows what's happening. Um, and, and thank you again for coming. So I'm going to give you an overview of the project and some of the key initiatives we're going to focus on here today in the evidence-based uh, policy and program world. So our goals of the project, I can remember to put the slides forward. Let's see. So our goals here are to identify the challenges faced by program implementers as they implement evidence-based programs for children and youth. We also want to assess the state of knowledge from research and practice that helps to address these challenges. And we want to synthesize lessons learned about replicating and scaling up evidence-based models and implementing evidence-informed or innovative strategies. Our central tasks in the meeting and our following work are around convening this forum to highlight key issues and topics related to selecting evidence-based uh, policies and programs for replication addressing issues of fidelity and adaptation. When is an adaptation the same program? And when is the adaptation a different program is a hot issue out there. And we're also focusing on the challenges now of scaling up evidence-based programs, as well as innovating and using broader evidence to inform strategies where we don't have tested evidence-based models to work from or where we're entering new arenas and need to find solutions that work for children, youth, and families. We'll be creating a set of issue papers for the field that synthesize the knowledge base and identify knowledge gaps related to the key issues that are discussed today. So our key evidence-based uh, initiatives in HHS that we'll be focusing on today are in three areas. 
We're going to focus on the Maternal, Infant, and Early Childhood Home Visiting Program, sometimes known as HV, but known as the Home Visiting Program Initiative. In the Teen Pregnancy Prevention Initiative, we have two programs that have uh, been developed. We have the Teen Pregnancy Prevention Program and the Personal Responsibility Education Program, which we call TPP and PREP, which you may hear me creep into the acronyms here. And then we have the Permanency Innovations Initiative. So we're not going to do the pretest to see how many people here actually knew about all three initiatives. But we have lots of expertise in the room in at least one, and sometimes two, and possibly all three initiatives. In our work in ASPE, over time, we've been uh, always interested in what ways we can answer questions about what works. And we've used a variety of methods, including experimental studies, uh, randomized experiments to answer this question, along with other quantitative and qualitative methods, as well as returning to the basic research to try to understand what we're learning about new factors that um, can affect the way we think about policy and research. And as you know, there's been ever-increasing interest and demand to show that our, we are um, investing in programs and policies that are working. The administration has uh, committed to the three investments in this area. We have new funding in these areas, and we also have had support from the Congress in putting these initiatives into place. And on this slide, it sketches out for you, so we frame what these three initiatives are about, what their key goals are. So we have in the early childhood, um, excuse me, in the home visiting initiative, the uh, work with states. We're supporting states who then are focusing on their service areas, which we'll hear more about over the course of the conference, and focus on uh, implementing evidence-based home visitation programs to meet the range of goals that are listed there. So this is really an extensive set of outcomes that are sought for these programs. In the teen pregnancy prevention initiatives, we have evidence-based programs that are going out from uh, the, to communities or the regional level in the teen pregnancy prevention program and through the states, through the uh, PrEP program to promote evidence-based programs with some different areas of focus in outcomes and scope that are represented on the slide. And then we have um, in the permanency innovation initiative an area where we don't have an existing range of tested models. So this is really focusing on how do you go out and implement and test programs in this area. This gives you some more basic information about um, these initiatives, just as background for the work that we're talking about today. In the home visiting world, uh, states have been developing, going through an extensive planning process. They've had um, uh, an initial base grant of funding and will be drawing down the full array of funds as their final plans are approved. <clears throat> you have information here on the 75% of funds that were to be directed towards implementing uh, evidence-based service models that meet the criteria listed here around demonstrating significant positive effects when evaluated using well-designed and rigorous research studies being in existence for at least three years having a national organization or institute of higher education, and um, having comprehensive program standards. So these were actually embodied in the statute that put these programs into place. There's also um, a promotion of innovation for states, and then there's a special uh, tribal home visiting program. In the teen pregnancy prevention realm, we have the uh, uh, same tier structure that you'll notice from home visiting, where we're putting um, funds into replicating evidence-based programs. And uh, 75 million has been awarded to 75 grantees to support the replication of models that have uh, had rigorous evaluation behind them. And then there's a, a research and demonstration tier of innovation that um, also has supported in the PrEP program. And with the PrEP, uh, uh, 46 states have come in for the funding to replicate evidence-based programs and uh, focus on incorporating adulthood preparation uh, uh, subjects as well. In the Permanency Innovation Initiative, the goals are around implementing um, intervention strategies informed by the relevant literature to reduce long-term foster care stays. This is focusing around um, children and youth who are most vulnerable to long-term foster care stays, 
and it comes with rigorous evaluation of these efforts to uh, test these models and their uh, uh, implementation. And I should say that the other uh, teen pregnancy and home visiting models are also accompanied by new extensive uh, evaluation efforts.